And hey. welcome to the WAN Show. We uh, have a great, great topic for you guys today. Yes. And a bunch of, of crap. Them. Oh, we have one great topic. Do we have a lot of great topics? I haven't looked at the doc, so I, I have no either. idea what the topics are today. It's going to be a wonderful show. It will be a wonderful show. I'm looking we forward to it. We have AMD news. Yes, leaked specs for an upcoming AMD graphics card. Is it Vega? No, no, no. it isn't. Um, we have Intel news. Yeah, we have more AMD news, more Ryzen news. But, I mean, would it be the WAN show without weekly Ryzen news? I, I, I made that joke in the fake pre-roll thing that I filmed. Yeah. Being like, it's 2017 and it's the WAN show, therefore AMD news. And also RGB news. Yes, yes. my friends, behind me on my other side, we've got RGB workstations. Yes. All of our editors are going... They're upgrading for 2017, and you know what that Having means? Having more colors in the computer helps with color correction. 10 core processors, double the memory, better graphics cards, DDR4, RGB and tempered glass. Oh, jeez. Tempered glass, my friend. Uh, what else we got here? Oh, Intel rumors, too. We have, in, we have rumors from everybody. Um, but we'll tell you more about that later. First, the pre-recorded intro. What? Oh. Wow, Colton! Is it wow, even his job Colton. anymore? Does he even have a job here anymore? No. Well, not now. He just screwed that up. Yeah, actually. You know what? Do you want to fire him or should I? Colton, you're fired. Wow, that's a... Uh, I mean, you were, you were so quick on the trigger there. You couldn't <laughs> even... You couldn't even, like, respond to me that you wanted to be the one to fire him. <laughs> you were just going straight for the fire. But I still need you to do stuff, so if you could like show up on Monday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> Thanks. That would yeah. be swell. That would be really good. Um, so yeah, we actually, actually, you know what? There is legitimately a lot of interesting news this week. So I guess speaking of people who don't have to be fired, James as well. Um, <laughs> yeah. Big, big leaks. Oh, didn't make it in. Big yeah. leaks. <laughs> big leaks. Oh. Big, big le league leaks. Big league leaks. Big league leaks. Leak, leak, oh, wow. Leak, leak, That'd leaks. be the most annoying name for I'm a website. Start, I'm gonna like start gleeking if I say, say that long <laughs> enough. Remember gleeking? I remember the kids in my high school yes. that would like they'd run around and be like, and they'd like so weird. And I'm just like, wow. Like, I have spit on me, sort but you're disgusting. the one. You're the one who should feel gross. Yeah. <laughs> AMD Radeon oh. RX 500 series official presentation allegedly leaked. Gaming benchmarks and specs allegedly confirmed. And the source here is, uh, well, the article we have is WCCF Tech, but I think... We should just start calling them Tech. Don't you get a kick out of, like... Uh, websites that exist based on leaking confidential <laughs> information from other websites that are like we better watermark these images yeah so that other websites don't don't steal this content illegitimately St like and the, my favorite part too cry me a river is when someone will steal like content like like say this was an accidental launch like what happened? I'm not going to call out the website name, but what like what happened around the 1080 Ti? Sure, like where they screw up the time zones and, and they they're like, oh go live. no, and then they pull their own article down, yeah. but someone else has cached it, so they take the images, steal those images, and then watermark them themselves. <laughs> That's like, how you get jacked. Wow. Son. That is how you get <laughs> jacked. All right. Speaking of jacked, according to the rumors. Polaris uh, is, it's going to be called, okay, I have to make sure that I am only saying things that are in the leak. So uh, they're calling it Polaris Refresh and uh, suggesting that it's going to be kind of Polaris but jacked. So they're showcasing specifications, gaming performance, and it looks like the series will be uh, utilizing a, a refreshed sort of cooling system. And power um, configuration. All cards except the Radeon RX 550 will use dual fan cooling solutions as standard. Um, AMD, uh, <clears throat> the, the alleged leak of the alleged slides alleges that AMD 
also will be offering higher stable operation under load, higher frequency stable operation under load with better overclocking, and that they will allegedly be available on April 18th. So there you have it. Now you know what allegedly may or may not be true. So here are some alleged slides. Um, so this, if true, for the RX 580, so this would be AMD's flagship until Vega, because as much as I would love to be talking about Vega right now, I'm not. Yeah. So 8 gigs of RAM, I guess. I, it looks GDDR5. Like, looks like maybe that would be standard. I'm, I'm, a, I'm actually not sure. Oh, no. Allegedly, RX 580 will have both 8 and 4 gig variants. Okay, so that's that same as before. I then. think so, yeah. Okay. And it will outperform the R9 380X, which is good, I guess. Where's the zero? I don't like when they don't label graphs. Because, like, you see, you see the, like, chunk difference between No, no, this is zero. Them? I think okay, we're good. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think we're good. We're good. Yeah, it's 50 versus 69. Okay, yeah, yeah. that's fair. And 69 always wins. Yep. Uh, so here's an RX, whatever that's supposed to be. Wow. Yeah, great slide. Good job. You know, if you're going to leak and steal slides, you might as well take a better photo. Yeah. Get on it. Okay, and... Take uh, responsibility for your photo quality, man. You no, know, here's the thing. How are you expecting not to get caught? Like, aren't they going to just, like, look back and be like, who was sitting there? <laughs> yeah. At this time. Yeah, I was even thinking, because, like, you don't want to do phone confiscation at these events, because that's sketchy. You never want to give your phone away. Yeah. So maybe they should give, like, people little boxes, and they, like, have to put the phone in the box, and yeah. it's on, like, a timed release. And it could be, like, a cool souvenir box. Yeah. Like, it could, it could like, make, oh, it could be a music box. <laughs> so no one could open it, because it'd be like, bing, 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 bing. <laughs> <laughs> That would AMD, be so awesome. AMD decorative, commemorative <laughs> music, music box. boxes <laughs> for their events, okay? That <laughs> idea is is when show <laughs> when show like like copyright, okay? Yeah. Which means you can use it. Yeah. We just want how much do we ask? We usually say ten percent. We say ten percent. Yeah. So we want ten percent of the money you'll make on giving away boxes to journalists <laughs> at events. <laughs> yeah. Which isn't to say that we're gonna pay you yeah. ten percent of the cost. Yeah, we don't we don't do that part. But that's what that sounds like, but that's not what's going on. Yes. Um so there's a so all oh, right, so the five seventy is apparently much faster than a three seventy, which is also fortunate because it's sort of been a while. Yes. Um, five se 560 is apparently much faster than a 360 and a 750 Ti. Like, I, we, we both do why the same thing. Why are we comparing thing. to the 750 Ti? <laughs> I think the reason why they do this, where they jump back a couple generations, is because that's... The upgrade cycle. Yes. I get it. Yes. But, like, yeah. that's just step into a Radeon RX. With a 550. How much is this going to cost? Uh, it doesn't say. 4K home theater PC ready. You know that it is not a gaming card <laughs> when they start talking about the home theater. And Photoshop. Oh, boy. And Photoshop and Adobe Premiere. With that said, like, from uh, my testing, having just, like, a graphics card is legitimately way better. Yeah. And then stepping up to higher-end graphics cards legitimately doesn't make much of a difference. My, like, housemate so, person yeah. does photo editing stuff mm -hmm. and, like, has to have a GPU. Yeah. Not even super important which one it is. Nope. Just has to have a GPU. Got to have a GPU. Yeah. So here they're comparing to Intel HD 530 graphics and the Radeon R7 250. And, I mean, that it's, it's not much of a competition, so there's that. I mean, you know, I'd be wondering... If this card, so I don't know pricing, uh, there's no leaked pricing here, but I would be wondering if oh, this card idea. could merit a revisiting of low-end graphics cards. Do they suck? Oh my god. That would actually be kind of cool. Because we've made, okay, we've made two of these. Linus hosted one of them, I hosted another mm -hmm. one. We and both agree, by the way. Yes, that very they much so. And they're pointless. I was just addressing comments on his video to be completely honest, and doing it with an, a newer card. I That's think is probably the closest thing to a mean comments video that we've ever done. 
pretty, yeah, pretty close. Yeah, yeah, like addressing mean comments. Except instead of most people just like reading it and then looking sad at the camera, we were like, get wrecked! <laughs> <laughs> Here's why you're wrong, and then here are four more reasons why you're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> also, Here's me putting them like this. Pow! Yeah. So, yeah. So maybe we do mean comments videos a little bit differently. All right. Speaking of mean comments, um, but yeah, that's actually a pretty good idea. Yeah, it's probably it's probably worth revisiting yeah. if it's any good. Yeah. yeah. Oceaholic has Ryzen Five, the sixteen hundred X, breaking lay records. At 5.9 gigahertz on the Crosshair 6 Hero motherboard. This is the same motherboard like people are upset at me for using in our video because whatever. Uh, what? People, oh, people can get upset about anything. So there's a CPU at the bottom of a frozen doodad and you know it's extreme overclocking. I, I know it's called a pot. <laughs> Um, it's extreme overclocking, so there's like six people watching who are interested, and for everyone else, we'll move on pretty quickly here, don't worry, but, um, German overclocker, Roman Hartung, I mean, I'm sure it's pronounced differently than that in German, but, uh, pushed it to 5.9, using some G-Skill DDR4 memory set to work at DDR4 3000, cost 12. Bus speed of 130 megahertz, liquid nitrogen, all cores and threads were enabled, and he ran Cinebench. Um, GPU... Pi, GPU Pi, and Geekbench. In these four benchmarks, he achieved global firsts, overtaking all Intel hex core processors. None Dang of which em. matters. <laughs> because, you know, it's funny. Also I bad. think everyone has gone through this, maybe. I mean, you might be about to make me feel stupid, which I wouldn't like, um, but <laughs> I'm gonna put myself out there anyway, because okay. I'm all about putting out. Um, <laughs> okay. Didn't we, did we all go through a time when we first heard of liquid nitrogen overclocking, where we went, I'm going to have a liquid nitrogen cooled computer one day, nope. and we start researching it. No. Nope. I literally looked at it and was like, that's really stupid because that's going to be a consumable. How old were you? Not that old. Maybe grade seven at the max. So I thought that there might be some <laughs> way to like. It use it, it like phase change it and like I don't know maybe you would pressurize it back down into a liquid and then you would okay something something I, then, okay so maybe but I, then at that point my brain would have gone way too expensive and I would never do that yeah so anyway and like super volatile and anyway liquid nitrogen is irrelevant the most you can do for actual 24 7 operation and even this is not practical is phase change so we're talking like minus 40 or so realistically. and it's like really loud and really and it's big obnoxious and, really and it's annoying. bulky and yeah. it's basically like this guy hey. and, would you, and would you invite this guy into your computer room <laughs> maybe maybe they would how's it going i'd like to check out your computer room may i enter straw poll 99 percent yes one troll <laughs> That sounds very much like the old uh, LTT intro. Uh, yeah, it's not that far off. <laughs> the, the, the porn intro. <laughs> Terrible. Um, <clears throat> what else do we have today? I mean, do we, do we even have topics? Oh, yeah. Actually, this is pretty cool. So, the rumors that were circulating that Intel was slashing prices on their CPUs in advance of AMD's Ryzen 7 launch, those turned out to be more to do with Micro Center being Micro Center and selling Intel processors at a loss for no apparent reason. I, nor anyone outside of Micro Center, seems to have been able, been able to crack the, the mystery <laughs> as to how they're able to sell CPUs at like 50 plus dollars below cost and still be in business all these years later. <laughs> um, but, if you thought for a second that Intel wasn't going to respond in any way, then you were definitely wrong, or at least rumoredly wrong. We actually don't have confirmation on this one way or the other, so I can kind of say whatever I want right now. Intel's Skylake X, so this is from TechSpot.com, and KB Lake X processors rumored to arrive earlier than initially anticipated. So this is a clear 
direct response to Ryzen 7 because both Skylake X and KB Lake X are the lagging behind um, sort of enterprise Xeon version that then gets adapted into this, this middle ground. So at the entry level, you've got 11.5x, 11 11.56, 11 11.50, 11.51. Is that all of them? Uh, Can they just change the socket count, so. the, the pin count to something other than 11.5 something? Yes, it's rather annoying. At this point, I feel like they're just toying with me. They're just trying to make it hard to remember. <laughs> So that's at the low end and the and the mid range and sort 5, of five one five 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 six. I think you got it. All right, okay. That's yeah. Awesome. So there's that. Then at the very high end, there's your LGA twenty eleven three or twenty eleven and uh, previously thirteen sixty six. And I think there was a, there was actually twenty five something. Can't remember. There, there's there's a different one. There's like a and there's like Knight's Landing and stuff. I forget how many pins that bloody thing has. It's yeah. like huge. Yeah. Anyway, I so those. so that's your server right there. Then they take those same server architecture chips, those same those same designs, and they kind of trickle them down into the the prosumer workstation like professional ish and also very very high-end enthusiast and that's going to be your 2011 3 based on your x99 chipset or like your your x something 99 chipset so what's happened is that for the last i don't know how long has it been five years ever since i think linfield so mm. linfield launched after bloomfield if i recall correctly i feel like it's been longer. so the enthusiast platform got the high end back in the 1366 days. So this was, um, yeah, got the high end first, I believe. And then Linfield, 1156 came later. You thought it was five years since Linfield? Yeah, when was Linfield? Eight. Oh, crap. Why am I so old? Okay, but Linfield came after Bloomfield, right? Uh, Let's I think hope. so. Anyway, so I'm going to tell the story my way regardless. So then what happened after that was... We went from the enthusiast platform getting the new architecture first, because Linfield was basically Bloomfield, but like crappier, because um, it was like dual cores and stuff. And then we went from, well, okay, they did have a quad core. Okay, look, the point is don't stress about it. We went from the enthusiast getting the update first, and then the mainstream getting it, to the mainstream getting the new architecture first, and then enthusiasts getting it later because we were like waiting for the enterprise to adopt it, and then we were waiting for that to to trickle down to the the high end and like the the workstation and the enthusiast market. So was it right? Did I have it? Uh, yeah. Okay. Also, good. there was five thousand people sitting on the Twitch from oh. that uh, little thing we did. But anyways, um, so sorry to all of those people who are there, and we are um, recording this actually the next day. Um, <laughs> so, anyway, so what, it, so what happened then was you would get mainstream processors that benefited from the, even if it's just 5 or 10% or improvement in IPC, you'd get mainstream processors that seriously outperformed much more expensive ones that were supposedly workstation or that were enthusiast class. And that has remained true basically since that time. So, what this article means, finally, full circle, back to this article, where the rumor is that both Skylake X, so that's the bigger Skylake with more cores, and KB Lake X, the fact that both of these are apparently on an accelerated timetable means that it looks like Intel is trying to kind of get caught get up. up yeah. So they're not fighting Ryzen 7 with not even current generation chips because the normal cadence would have Intel launching a, uh, a follow-up to KB Lake in June at Computex and then launching what would finally then be uh, Skylake E months later at around the PAX time frame. No, no. Which is super weird. So now Skylake X is moving up from sometime in Q3 to June, so that's around Computex time frame, and will apparently include six and 10 core CPUs, support for quad channel DDR4 2667 uh, memory, and 44 
PCI E-Lanes. Um, I am a little confused about the what this particular, hold on a second. Um, so we're gonna get an X299 chipset to accompany that apparently. And I don't understand um, what part? What, what these KB Lake X notes mean? So a KB Lake X apparently is also going to be on the 2066 socket, but with just four cores, dual channel memory, and far fewer PCI E lanes. Well, then why would you put it on that socket instead of just putting it on an 11? Um, my it, only guess right for now? that, or I like think, a would person. be if you want a box with huge amounts of RAM and don't actually care about compute speed. Yeah, but if you only have two channels, you wouldn't be able to do that. Oh, is it actually? So what does this even what does this even mean? Two channels. Yeah. Huh. This is like the only benefit of the higher end platform is more cores, more PCIe lanes, and more memory channels. So if you took all that stuff off, then you'd be dumb. Um, well, I don't know. it's a rumor. So the <laughs> fact that it makes no sense whatsoever. Um, might be fine. In might this be case. fine. And apparently they'll lack an integrated GPU. So that's one difference. But uh, stay tuned. So there's that. Okay, so here's another rumor. Yeah. This one I hadn't even heard of. New Intel KB Lake G. KB CPU. Lake G. G edition. Uh, the original wow. article here is from Tech Power Up. What? G, you wow. know? Like, because yeah. that's what, isn't that what rappers do? They like I hug think, themselves? Yeah. Just like, you know, yo. Oh, jeez. <laughs> um, so rumored Intel KB Lake G series. Modular. Multi die, HBM2, and this is a big question mark here, and you can't see it because it's cut off. AMD graphics intellectual property? Whoa, can you imagine that? Can you imagine an Intel so CPU weird. with AMD graphics on board? Okay, if this happens, we have to make a system with this processor and an NVIDIA graphics card. Just for pure lols? Yeah. So we could have all three married yes. for the first time ever since yes. I did my Intel CPU, SLI, and Crossfire system. That thing was epic. That thing was stupid. Epic. So stupid. Hey, you should go back to that and use um, Unraid to have an SLI and Crossfire system properly running both on the same box. No SLI or Crossfire and virtualization yet. But if they get it working, that would be sick. I guarantee you it will happen. Because then you could be like optimal situation for whichever game you want to run. I actually have a new Unraid plan. Okay. One that I don't think you've heard about yet. Um, we'll are get we, back to KB we Lake G in a talking minute. Talking about it on, it's all good? Yeah, okay. actually, no, I'll tell you about it after, after KB Lake G. Okay. Um, it, it, I think you're gonna like it. I think you're gonna be like, yeah, that's pretty cool. So KB Lake G, uh, the company has already played with such a design before with its Clarkdale family of processors. Uh, so this would be like a heterogeneous modular approach to the CPU that allows them to integrate external graphic solutions like uh, that could be produced in other factories and they could just like fit them oh, on the package. Wow. So instead of having it on die, so uh, back to, back to uh, Clarkdale, if I recall correctly, had the CPU cores and then like the iGPU and they were both on the same package but they didn't share a die so they didn't have to be actually manufactured at the same time. So this would allow them to put them together on the package and potentially like mix and match them. So they could save die space on their 10 nanometer dies for actual cores, increase yields, and um, potentially, you know, work with a potential partner like AMD on putting very different graphics technology on the package with the CPU. Now, one of the things that's been speculated, and I, I'm not the only one who, is, who has brought this up, is that this is part of the reason that AMD split into AMD and Radeon Technology Group. Okay. Because if Intel had to put AMD Radeon graphics on their box, 
that would be a big no-no. But if they do Radeon Technologies But if it was group, Radeon Technologies Group, uh, then it's probably fine. Graphics, I think that might be quite a bit more palatable. Yeah. And then Radeon Technologies Group Graphics would just also work with AMD. That's right. Which is fine. Which is fine. Yeah. And it could be owned by AMD, but like there's there's so much of that where like the the distinction between um, you know Lexus and Toyota is is purely in name, but that doesn't change that there's a consumer perception, yeah. and that other brands have to be aware of a different consumer perception that's towards Radeon Technologies Group and AMD. Right. Interesting. Yeah. Um, so anyway, back to that Unraid project. Um, I'm planning to do the, the, like the best streaming PC. And you know how every streamer that's worth their salt is running two boxes, right? Rude. Uh, yes. It's, it, it goes back and forth a little bit, but a lot of the like bigger time ones do. Yep, because it's just it's more flexible in a lot of ways. Yes, it increases cost, but by the time you've got you know, a box and you upgrade your machine, you kind of go, oh, well that, now that's my streaming box. I, I can see how it's a natural upgrade path that many streamers would go through as they grow their following and uh, are starting to invest more into what they're yeah, doing. Yeah. So I think with virtualization, I could run my two boxes in one box. Okay. With enough processing cores that I could do X264 CPU software encoding on one of them with a separate monitor keyboard mouse, like. Battle station, command station style, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, without giving up gaming performance on the main gaming box. That'd be pretty cool. So that's the goal. Uh, have you thought about a Hackintosh and Windows PC in one PC build? Um, yes, but it's uh, it's a sensitive topic, you know, working with Unraid around Hackintosh, where they're like, oh, we don't want to touch that with a ten foot pole. So they're not going to support me on it, and um, yeah, it's it's a it's that. such a gray no, area. I, I mean, it's yeah. not even gray; it's illegal. <laughs> Is it? Yeah, because you have not paid for the software. Because the software is provided with the purchase of a Macintosh But you used computer. to be able to buy the software. You, I don't believe you can anymore. Okay, but you used to be able to. Then I think it was more gray. Okay. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Um, actually, speaking of Apple news, we've got something that we missed last week, and we will get to that as soon as we are done with our sponsor spots. I fix it. I fix it. You fix it. I'm making a new jingle for I, I fix it. No one knows what's going on. <laughs> We're going to do a shanty song, and maybe we'll go a little faster now talking about I fix it. I'm sorry for subjecting everyone to that. But I'm going to go get a kit. But thank you. That was fun. So iFixit is your one-stop shop for DIY electronics repair. They've got over 19,000 free step-by-step -step repair guides and a huge inventory of replacement parts and tools with lifetime warranty. And they've got many, many different products. This one is our personal favorite. This is the ProTech Toolkit. It's got 64 different bits. It's got an electrostat oh, electrostatic. Um, it's got an ESD strap. It's got... Um, you know, spudgers and pokers and prying tools and guitar picks and ESD safe tweezers and the butter knife and it's got all this great stuff. And I'm not I'm not gonna say that that you can do this. I'm not gonna say that it's approved to do this or any of that kind of stuff. But now twice this exact kit well okay, this exact type of kit, one with Pella's name on it, one with my name on it. Don't do it. I know no, no. <laughs> We can't advertise that as a feature. It's pretty cool uh. because all the tools are under the restricted length, which is the thing. He took this through the airport. Yep. I mean, here, get, give, give me this. I didn't even get through the airport with my screwdriver once. Yeah. Was it too long, though? Look at this thing. Yeah. I mean... They yeah. really didn't like this one. Even though it's uh, not sharp? Even though it's not sharp, you guys can see that. Uh, because it looks like a little teeny knife. So what I did was I was like, what, could I see it for a second? Asked very politely and all that kind of stuff. The guy handed it to me and I was like, it's fine. And like started stabbing myself with it. And I was like, it's not a knife. It's for getting between components. And then started like 
just talking way too much about like computer repair and like what all the different things do and stuff. And then they were just like, shut up, go away. A little bit. And like, they didn't like these either because they're basically yeah. little spears. Those are that, that's dangerous. Yeah. Um, so they took them away and they brought them to like a measuring device and stuff. And they were under a certain length. And if they're under a certain length, it then becomes, instead of it being a hard and fast rule, it becomes discretion of the agents. Oh, and they were like, okay, I think you're good. Just like, don't do anything with it and don't like pull it out on the plane. And I was like, 100%. Yeah, unless United's trying to drag you off the plane, then maybe you could <laughs> defend yourself a little bit with it. Get away from me! <laughs> Um, oh jeez! So meanwhile, they've they've confiscated like but was your... four of my Spider Co. ladybugs, which are like this yeah. big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, brilliant, freaking <laughs> brilliant. Um, anyway, that that was a so very long. So not an official thing, but it's it's happened. Yeah, at all. It's happened twice. Not now. even a thing. No. No. Uh, but basically, um, yeah, you can go buy an iFixit kit today and not travel on the plane with it. Put it in your checked. And if you use offer code WANSHOW at ifixit.com slash Linus, then you can save five bucks on a purchase of $10 or more. Terrible. <laughs> Speaking of things that are not terrible, FreshBooks. FreshBooks is super easy to use. It's the invoicing and accounting tool that lets freelancers and small business owners stay organized, manage their time better, and, well, ultimately, make more money. Because when you spend your time working on a client's job, whether it's a computer or painting a house or, or plumbing or electrical work or whatever, whatever, building bird feeders, who cares? Whatever it is that you do, when you spend your time on that, instead of mucking around with accounting software, you're gonna be happier, your clients are gonna be happier, your business is gonna grow, and that is what life is all about because capitalism. And you can possibly even get more clients because you'll spend less time dicking around on computer software. Exactly, you can scale better and your life gets to be less stressful because when you don't have people breathing down your neck about why something isn't done or you know where your, where your bill is or whatever, no, not yeah, that anyone breathes even... down your neck about where the bill <laughs> where is. Where your but... bill is. But you don't have to spend time breathing down their necks because they have a system built in where you can check and see if they've opened it or not. Yeah, you can send your invoice in like 30 seconds and then you actually can know if they looked at it. Yeah. And they'll be like, oh yeah, sorry, I know I haven't paid for little Sally's dance classes, but uh, I didn't see it. Can you send me another copy? No! I will not send you another copy. You got it. You saw it. Pay up. And that's the FreshBooks way. Yeah, Sally's mom. So visit freshbooks.com slash when and get a free trial today for, so where, you can, where you can try it. And then uh, enter WAN Show in the How You Heard About Us section. They also have a mobile card reader, so you can even take payment directly through FreshBooks. Nice. Um, what else do we got here? Ooh. This is like I read the future. Read the future. Read the past? I participated in the past and influenced the future. <laughs> um, apparently, Microsoft seems to think that variable refresh rate is coming to a TV near you. So this would be uh, technology like G-Sync and FreeSync. So the idea being that, uh, well, okay, you guys probably know what variable refresh rate is, but basically Project Scorpio apparently supports FreeSync with Microsoft working with TV manufacturers to try and push them to support it as well. The latest HDMI 2.1 specification also supports variable refresh rate. So there you have it. Apple announces a completely rethought Mac Pro. Uh, <sighs> there are some great quotes in here. Uh, I don't actually have that in, uh, in my notes here, but man, there's like some great quotes. So, so it didn't work out, the, the expansion didn't work out as well as we thought it would. Didn't they never expand? Well, no, you could expand using Thunderbolt 2. Oh, I thought you meant like expansion of the... Yeah, okay, never mind. And I was just like, really? You thought it would work out? <laughs> like, immediately. Like, nobody at Apple clued into this, but like, immediately. Remember that picture that someone posted of 36 Thunderbolt devices plugged into a Mac Pro? 
It's like, really? You thought this was a good idea? <laughs> Why? How? Oh. And they're like, yeah, it was hard to upgrade. It was hard to keep it. Honestly, I don't think it was that hard to keep it current. No. I think what was hard was justifying the expense of re-engineering the motherboard for newer standards, re-engineering the uh, GPUs for newer products, and justifying that cost based on how few of the things you were selling. That's what happened. Especially when you could just make a tower, which is what everyone wants anyways. Apple's complaining about thermal constraints. No, they mean refreshing that product. No, I know, but yeah. like, like if you, someone posted a picture comparing the old tower systems yeah. to the trash can systems, and there's the like objectively better trash can systems selling for the same amount as the old tower systems. Oh, like on eBay and stuff? Yeah. Because people just want the old power systems anyway. But Apple's <laughs> complaining they couldn't refresh it because of thermal constraints, and I'm looking at that going, GPUs have gotten way more efficient, so there's that. So are CPUs. And CPUs, well, at that class, Xeon class, okay. they're the same. Yeah. Because you could go up to whatever was the highest end, like I think it was 8-core back then, and that was a big deal. Um, yeah, they're, they're, no, 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 no. This had everything to do with not wanting to reinvest back into it. Um, but either way, basically, Phil Schiller said Apple wants to architect it so we can keep it fresh with regular improvements, creating a Mac Pro modular system. They're also apparently making a high-end dis... <laughs> I think it's called PCI Express. <sighs> They're also making a high-end display to go with it. I will be happy to see a return yes. to Apple displays because yes, they've done cool. a great job of that. Yeah, they have. Um, Although there's way more competition now. That's true. Like, way more. And honestly, this is like Apple pulling down their pants and taking a big dump on partners like LG who have worked on exclusive, like, Mac-only products like the 5K Ultrafine, which, by the way, is fixed now. I don't know if you were on the WAN show where we heard about putting a router too close to it, glitching it out. Yeah. Yeah, they're yeah. fixed now. Also, I, don't know if I, was on, I don't know if I was on that WAN show, but I heard about yeah, that. Yeah, our unit is fixed. That's, that's good. Um, oh, yeah, video to come very soon. Uh, you won't see anything this year, but in the meantime, they're actually releasing a slightly upgraded Mac Pro. So the $3,000 quad core with dual Fire Pro D300s has morphed into a six core with dual <sighs> D500s. Still $3,000. Uh, both models have 16 gigs of RAM. Neither <laughs> has USB Type-C or Thunderbolt 3. 16 gigs of so RAM. So this was basically a price drop on like... Some pre-existing stuff. Some existing tech. Flowplane, right? Do you want to cover a topic while I get uh, while I get it fired up, so we can I... show you guys some of the crazy stuff on Flowplane right now? It's crazy. Whoa! Should I should I cover the video that's coming out tomorrow? Um, or just what is that? Wait for that video to happen. Let's wait for that video to happen. Okay. There's going to be a big Flowplane related video um, tomorrow. Or um, not. Or not tomorrow. <laughs> We're getting a look from Ed. <laughs> it's filmed. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't know. Um, if it doesn't okay. happen, it's cool. Do you want to do something else then? While uh, I, uh... Yeah. So Scrapyard Wars Prison Edition. Not really an actual thing. Don't worry about what that. What are you talking um, about? Inmates in Ohio were in this system where they were disassembling. It was, it was like a, a a work system within the prison. I don't know what they're properly called, but the the idea was that they would disassemble PCs as like a job. And inmates in the Ohio prison built computers from the PCs that they were supposed to be dismantling for recycling. The unsupervised inmates later hid these PCs in the ceiling of a training room, and it's I don't think it's actually uh, in here, but they networked them together. <laughs> Investigators found software, pornography, and articles about making drugs and explosives on the machines. They were caught when IT staff flagged unusual levels of internet activity on a contractor's account. Which, like... That's sort of epic. <laughs> they, they built computers into the ceiling. A rogue PC on the network was connected to port 16. Wow. <laughs> um, wow. Okay. So they don't, they don't do whitelisting. They don't do any of that kind of stuff. He just, he just plugged it in. 
One of the inmates who set it up described how he had used components from other PCs. He plugged the machine into an internet connection device in the prison, and bam, I'm on the network, he told investigators. <laughs> Bam, indeed. That that IT Inmate. guy's just like, oh. Bam, right. Where was indeed. this? That's one thing I'm interested in. Where was this switch? I don't know. That he just plugged into. <laughs> I don't know, man. Here, here's all the components for some computers and apparently, like, cables and stuff. We're going to not supervise you and leave exposed switches around. Brilliant. Frickin' yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Um, so I'm ready to talk about what's on float plane this week. Uh, channel super fun. Go karting. Burkle with drunk goggles. Oh jeez. Versus Dennis with not drunk goggles. Wow, I sort of still think Burkle might win. Burkle's ridiculously good at go karts, and like specifically that track, he's done a lot. So like the fact that he has drunk goggles still. I just threw up. But did you win? They're gonna have to win. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. No spoilers. But I did almost throw up. Like had the dry. Heaving. So he almost threw up, and he was dry heaving. That's worth watching it right there. But it's but it's all in the name of your craft, right? Yeah, it's all in the name of fun. All in yeah. the name of fun. <laughs> uh, we've got a tech quickie on laser projectors. Oh, that's pretty cool. How the math those work. We've how got the, the much anticipated oh. red weapon unboxing that has already generated um, 167 replies. Wow. Which on float plane is like actually a lot. Check out that speed. Did you see how fast that started playing? I did. I, oh, okay, good. Oh, God. I get so much anxiety every single time you do anything with flow plane on the stream. <laughs> it looks good and it's working, though. Yeah. Looks, looks crisp AF, man. See? See these buffer chunks coming in? Yep. That is how it works. Uh, do you have the load balancing stuff going on right now or no? No. I don't think so. Okay. Cool. Well, anyway, look at that. Look at that. Look at that scrubbing you, you working. Did use a saw? Isn't that beautiful? Is that a saw? Well, that's I, awesome. I don't know, man. I'm just, I'm just. Oh, I gotta, what? I gotta be me, man. Um, Do it for the memes. Yeah, it's all for the memes. You so, opened up a red weapon with a weapon. Oh my god. That's right. I get it. So red weapon. Uh, the Ryzen Five review was simultaneous release because of the embargo. Um, MSI GT eighty three VR Titan laptop. Uh, we've got uh, warranty sticker removal guide just went up. Oh, oh yeah. That's oh, oh, this honest answer is what's up with the thumbnails? That is a real. How many replies are on that one? Uh, 251. Lots. Yeah, this one actually I think is getting pushed another week yeah. due to the oh. Ryzen 5 embargo. So that's going to be on Float Plane for. That'll be on Float Plane longer. for that's another a, week. That's a really good video. Um, and then the last one that I'm super stoked on our smallest, most compact desk PC yet. So that's actually really, really small. We need like a pop can for scale or something banana. like that. Banana. Banana for scale, always absolutely. Do banana. Um, so yeah, float plane, float plane Club is going great, in case you guys were wondering, and there's going to be a huge update on the LTT channel, and I guess we'll also upload it to float plane. Soon TM. Um, soon TM. Yeah. All right. Hoping tomorrow, but it might not happen. I don't know. The original article here is from Ngadget. This is terrible. Uber, Uber's hell program tracked and targeted Lyft drivers. What? Apparently it ran for two years. Two years! They called it hell? So they placed fake Lyft rider accounts around cities in order to map the distribution of Lyft drivers, as each rider can see up to eight nearby drivers. Monitoring the Lyft driver's habits, Uber noticed that some drivers were double apping, driving for Lyft and Uber. So I actually got picked up by an Uber driver I've that had a Lyft sticker on the back of his car. Uber then sent more rides and offered incentives to those drivers to keep them too busy to drive for Lyft. Wow. Uh, the program was discontinued after Uber paid tens of millions per week in bonuses. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So basically the idea was if you signed up for a Lyft account, you just made more money from Uber. That's ridiculous. Unbelievable. And they're kind of assholes. Uh, Nintendo. This is, um, or yeah. the original article is from Ars Technica and I love their headline. Uh. Nintendo hates money. Discontinues the NES Classic. Did we ever get one? 
No. So that's They're it. Like it's officially ridiculously difficult to buy. It's officially limited edition now. Yep. Ignoring continued demand, Nintendo will stop producing the system this month. This is probably more to do with Nintendo making far more manufacturing switches. Like they, they might actually, maybe they're off the same line. Like maybe they're converting the line to produce more switches. Maybe there is a reason. Um, but that is kind of a bummer. They sold 1.5 million units from its November 11th launch until New Year's. So to put that in perspective, Wii U sold 14 million in its lifetime. <laughs> Our representative said that the NES Classic wasn't intended to be an ongoing long-term product. However, due to high demand, we did add extra shipments to our original plans. The NES Classic controller will also be discontinued. I feel like it's the wrong move. I feel like Nintendo... Because like if, if they can sell... like I feel like it doesn't matter because it's Nintendo. But I feel like if they can sell another 1.5 million units... Maybe it's worth like extending that building a little bit, adding it's, another line, and just dedicating it to classics. You know, it's not like Nintendo has a lot of products. Yeah, exactly. I mean, unless you count like amiibos and like trash like that. I mean, like actual yeah, entertainment like, systems. <laughs> yeah, and the accessories for the entertainment systems are often built by third parties exactly. that are officially licensed by Nintendo. Exactly. So, like, ah. Uh, um, it's Nintendo, and they will always succeed. It's just, it just seems like a very silly thing to do. All right, what else we got here? American colleges to offer scholarships to play video games. So the original article here is from Bloomberg. Hooray. And it's making its way onto my screen, slowly but surely. Um, at least it was trying to. It's not trying anymore. The growth of esports has colleges and universities developing teams to compete as prizes are growing and sponsors are taking notice. And I, you know, it's uh, far be it from universities and colleges to, uh, to not notice money to be made off of students that they don't have to pay. Yeah. Um, coaches say that esports requires the same discipline and decision making as other activities and all those same life skills go into gaming. This is a developmental tool. Some of the teams practice 20 hours a week on top of studying game film and team building projects and about 20 to 30 matches or tournaments are played annually. University of Utah is the first school in the Power Five, the five richest athletic conferences in college sports to offer scholarships for video gaming. The team will start off playing League of Legends. University of California, Irvine, Irvine, what, Irvine, Irvine recently built an esports specific arena on its campus, and the Big Ten Conference's television network earlier this year began broadcasting competitions between club teams and its member schools. Interesting. Wow. It's really happening. It is really happening. Phone accelerometers. This was originally uh, posted by TechCrunch. Oh, man. Researchers demonstrate how pins and other info can be gathered through phone movement. Holy shit. So researchers were able to successfully guess your pin that's, based on movement of the phone. You know what? That's really impressive. That's crazy. Even just the thought that, like, hey, you notice how people's hands move in similar ways when yep. they go to type? Like, that's... So they analyzed the data impressive. from rotation sensors, gyroscopes, and accelerometers... And they were able to crack four-digit pins with 70% accuracy on the first try and 100% accuracy by the fifth try. I wonder, I would love to, like, make a video about this, meet these guys, and then find how they're doing it. Because, like, if, if you try to do it one-handed, like, yeah, mm -hmm. that's actually probably pretty easy. But if you lay it down and then use one of those, like, pens with the tips on it yeah. and lightly press the buttons, is that enough of an impact like, Hard you know to what say. I mean? I like, don't know. find where the they line is. They are sensitive. Yeah, they are. Like, if you ever just, like, fired it up so you can see the raw data from the sensors and, like, move it, like, they're... They're very sensitive, They're yeah. really sensitive. It would be... That would... I would find that very interesting. Unlike your camera and GPS, mobile apps and websites don't need to ask permission to access information from these sensors. So a site accessed with malicious code via your mobile browser could activate sensor-based monitoring in the background when browser tabs are left open. <laughs> Crazy, hey? And if you're like me with 50 browser tabs open at any given moment, then... On your this, mobile device? This is a... Yeah. Seriously? Oh, I just don't close them. <sighs> the unfortunate thing about that is that means that will be me eventually. 
Because I held out. I, do you remember? Do you remember desktop browser tabs when we first started working together? I couldn't even handle it. I maxed out at like five. Now, whoa! I think I have like before I, I just reformatted, but like before that, I think I had like eight or nine windows of Chrome open, all with lots of tabs. <laughs> It's the oh. only way to be, man. It's the only way to be. Yeah. And you know what the other only way to be is? Done the WAN show. Yeah. So I think that's pretty much it, you guys. We'll see you again next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. Dun 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 That's really that's not a song. That's a copywritten thing. <laughs> no, I'm dead. I was mentioning, you know how we like bring the couch in? Yeah. The, it would be way too comfortable with the outro. Us taking the couch back out. So bring the couch in. I'll just ask Ed if he wants to do an extra animation. <laughs> well, that was clear. <laughs>